I welcome you to part 11 of our Pilgrim's Progress series. And last session we were saw Christian uh, coming to the gate uh, and about Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is called the way. He called himself that. Uh, throughout the scriptures we read where God made a way through the Red Sea for his people. In Matthew chapter 7 we read we are to enter in at the straight gate and that's what Pilgrim did. He went through the gate which is Christ. And let, let's just read about the way uh, other scriptures which talk about uh, the way of, of, of God and other, other things about the gate which leads to destruction just very quickly. Um, for on the positive side, for the commandment, God's word is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, Proverbs 6, 23. Uh, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way, Proverbs 8, 13. He is in the way of life that keeps instruction, Proverbs 10, 17. In the way of righteousness is life, and in, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Proverbs 12, 28. And Luke chapter 179, to give light to those that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path or the way of peace. Luke 179, and I am the way, Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the and the, the life. And Jesus told us to enter into the straight gate. A few verses on the negative side, on the, the, the gate to destruction, it says, For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Uh, the way of the wicked is as darkness, and they know not at what they stumble. Well, that's in Proverbs 4.19. Enter um, not into the path of the wicked, and go not into the way of evil men. Pro, uh, Proverbs 4, 4.14. So, another thought though, like you can know everything about Christ theologically, the way, but you, but you need the whole package going for you, not just to have a right theology. Now, you know, what I mean is this, that you can mentally accept the right theology about Christ, um, but you, if, that's as far, if that's as far as you go, like you, you don't make theology your God, but rather you worship and become in fellowship with the God of the theology, and there is a difference. I'll repeat that again. You know, don't make theology your God, but rather worship and be in fellowship with the God of the theology. You know, I, I, I know on the internet through message boards, there's, there's many that they just love, they just, to talk and discuss theological concepts, 
and you know I, I that that can be good to a point but I've often wondered and pondered to want to ask some individuals you know have, have you prayed and worshiped God today what's what's your fellowship like with the Lord uh, are you in fellowship with him uh, you know if, if you start your day with worship and with God and, and I'm not meaning to get in the legalism here but you know what can I say but you know a, a, a good hour a day I mean I'm not saying it has to be an hour a day two hours a day but Jesus did say can you not watch with me one hour he said to his disciples I'm not saying you're not you don't have God in your life if you haven't haven't given him that um, degree of time for each day. But the point is, are you really in fellowship with God or are you just worshiping the theology that you find uh, intriguing to want to always talk about? And some people make that their hobby, you know. So have the whole package going. Uh, you know, possess the whole package. Relationship and fellowship with God and His Word, and 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 make make sure you have both both uh, alongside of each other, and you're on safe ground. Uh, we need to take heed, I think, to the warnings of Jesus in Matthew seven. 21, 23, where, you know, he said that many in the judgment would say, uh, didn't we do this for you or do that? And Jesus would say, I, I, I never knew you. I never knew you, meaning you knew all about me, but you didn't know me personally. You know, are we in fellowship with the Lord? Have both good theology, but also good fellowship and relationship with the Lord. You know, you can know a lot about George Washington and a historical figure, but that don't mean you know George Washington. You get what I'm saying. So Pilgrim, anyway, he went through the gate, the gate being Christ. And various things occurred inside the gate, but one thing he was in, he was directed to go to a man called interpreter to his house, and there he learned many various lessons on what she on what she was it was it would strengthen his uh, journey on the way, and. We won't get into every single one prog Pilgrim's Progress mentions, but uh, I just I, I picked one here. He he saw two children named Patience and Passion, and let me let me read a few lines from the book about Patience and Passion. There are two children. Uh, the interpreter took Christian into a little room where two children were seated, each in his own chair. The name of the older was Passion, and the name of the other was Patience. Obviously, pa Passion was not at all content, while Patience was very quiet. And Christian asked the interpreter, why is passion so restless? Why is he so un un at unease? He said, well, the, the king wants them to, to wait for the best for next year, but passion wants all the best things now, but patience is willing to wait. And then came to passion and poured out at his feet the bag of treasures, which he quickly gathered in his arms with great joy. And he laughed loudly and made fun of patience. Uh, sounds like the prodigal son story in a way. The prodigal son, he, he got everything in this life. All the pleasures, all the enjoyments. Um, but he but he wasted them, everything he had received. And at the end of the day, he was left empty with nothing. 
uh, Jesus told us, Jesus, Jesus told us that, you know, we, we can have our rewards now or we can have the rewards later. Uh, he, he said, uh, passion, passion represents this world. He represents those uh, of the next world. Men of this world must have all their rewards in this life. They can't wait. And Christian said, you know, he saw that patience has the better wisdom for many reasons. First, he waits for the best thing. Secondly, he will enjoy the glory of his, of his rewards when the other has nothing but rags. You know, are we living for this world or are we, are we living for the next? Uh, I repeat, are we living for this world or are we living for the next? Now, uh, and it does not go to say that mean to say that you can't have any enjoyment on this side of heaven. No, but I think you get, I think you get the gist of what what he's trying to say here. What's your priority? I mean, is it to, is it to serve God and please Him? And uh, um, G Jesus said, "Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moss and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal." But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, which they will never perish, they'll never fade away. You know, an interpreter said, the glory of the next world will never pass away or wear out, but the glories of this life are soon gone. Uh, Therefore it is said of a certain rich man, in your lifetime you receive good things, and likewise, Lazarus, evil sings, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. That was from Luke 16, verse 25. And Christian said to interpreter, well, uh, then, I, then I consider it's best not to covet things of this world, but to wait for the good things to come. Uh, keep your priorities uh, straight. Uh, interpreter said, you speak the truth. The things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4.18 Yet present things are so close to our fleshly appetites and eternal things so far from our souls, we're, we're apt to yield to our carnal desires rather than wait for the satisf satisf satisfaction of the eternal. Thus we become joined to the things of this world and so lose our future reward. Okay, so it's very similar to Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8, uh, where, where, Paul, where Paul said the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. You know, and if we live according to our flesh, we'll, we will die or we'll receive the penalty uh, it won't go well. But if we live according to the Spirit, you know, we, we hang in there, we use wisdom, we, we uh, keep balance and perspective and realize we're just passing through this world. Keep your priorities straight. So, uh, we'll, we'll take up uh, on next lesson the next thing, uh, Christian and the interpreter uh, see, uh, and he learns a great lesson coming up about how to be persistent and the type of faith, the type of determination that one needs to have. Okay, see you next session.